he said, hey, I'll swap those back for you, no problem, because it's not just a simple thing, you know, you gotta rewire it. These are passive pickups, the 81s are active, so I had to pull the, all that out, you gotta put all that back in. It's just something I'm not interested in doing, I probably would have never done. But since he offered to do it, he's gonna put the 81s back in for me. And so to take advantage of that, what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna play some tracks, or just riff around a little bit while we've got the DeMarzio deactivator in here, and then George will come over tomorrow, get this guitar, take it home, put the 81, come back, and then I'll play it with the 81 again. It'll be through the exact same setup in my DAW here. We'll get to compare them back to back, so that'll be a cool experiment. And then on top of that, I'm gonna surprise George and tell him I got another one I want him to do. This is a beautiful Jackson Virtuoso, and it came with the Seymour Duncan JBTB4s. And nothing wrong with them, but it's just not the sound that I'm used to and not the sound that I'd like. So I'm gonna surprise George. He doesn't know that I'm gonna hand him this one too and be like, pop an 81 in this for me too. So I'm really excited to hear what this guy's gonna sound like because I do truly love this guitar, but I haven't like used it like I've been using all my other ones because it just doesn't have that sound that, that I want. And I think it's because of the 81. So we're gonna find that out. All right, so I've never been much of a pickup guy. You know, pickups. Why? Two main reasons. The first is that I just started receiving guitars early on from ESP when my career started, and they always had EMG pickups. Like any guitar I chose had EMG pickups. Then came into PV amps, and just that high gain combination just sounded amazing to me and the guys in Camira. It's what we wrote with, recorded with, toured with, all that, and it's just always sounded amazing. Never really searched for anything else. Guys all the time are like, oh, you gotta try out this pickup, you gotta try out that pickup. I've just never really had the desire to. I realized that there's a huge, amazing world around pickups and different tones, and guys love experimenting and swapping out and everything like that. All good. But for me, it's just one of those things, like I kind of said, where it's I've just never been interested in anything else. I just liked the sound that I had and was content with that, right? And isn't that the name of the game when you're seeking stuff out? You just find what you like and then, okay, well, whatever. For me, that's how it went. Second major reason is, I think it's pretty difficult to compare pickups. It's kind of like, you know, comparing tires on a car. It's a huge process to swap out the tires. And then once you finally do, you get in there and you're driving around and you're like, uh, I think they feel smoother or I think they have better traction. That's how it is with the guitars. It's like. You play it, you're like, yeah, I want to try a different sound. And then it, it takes hours to swap out pickups, get strings back on, all that. And then when you plug it in, you're like, mm, I think that sounds better, but I'm not sure. You could record it, which is what we're going to do today because I got a big project in mind here. So maybe a year ago or so, I started working with DiMarzio, love their straps, and they sent me some pickups to try out. And I was like, okay. I'm gonna get into this. I'd never really swapped out pickups. I really like the look of these. There's no denying this beautiful LTD M1000. These blue uh, DiMarzio deactivators look incredible. So that was cool. I did the swap out. It was a grueling process, much more involved than, uh, than I had anticipated. I made a whole video about it. I, I jammed around on them. During the video, I'm like, yeah, you know, these are cool. I really like the look. But as time went on, I started like, just really second guessing that or like feeling bad about it. And for the record, I do not blame the pickups. Perhaps I wired them improperly. I'm not some expert when it comes to wiring and stuff like that. So at any rate, I could have done something wrong. More likely so is that I just use my same setup through an amp sim. Right now, we're gonna use the amp knob Reb C. And for that video, I can't remember exactly what I used, but it would have been something like that. It might've been an STL tone hub, it might've been, but it was a sound that I was familiar with that I was making tons of videos with, playing video, playing guitar all the time. I had it dialed in, I loved it. Maybe that wasn't the appropriate sound for these pickups. Maybe that was the appropriate sound for EMG-81s. Obviously it was, that's what I had dialed in, it's what I liked. So. I thought that, oh, I'm just gonna put some new pickups in and play through the same rig, which would be what most people are doing, right? Most people have one amp, you know? And so you hear the pickups through that amp and then you swap out pickups and you hear the, those pickups through that same amp. So I figured it'd be the same thing. I'm just running through an amp sim. So, but maybe I didn't dial it in properly. Maybe I didn't spend the time dialing it in. At any rate, it's just not for me. And it all comes back to, I just like the sound that I've always played through the 81s. So I'm gonna switch back. My buddy George, who's been working on guitars with me for a long time, he's been in a few videos, um, he's starting up maybe a little business. I'm trying to, I'll talk to him tomorrow about it when he comes over, but I'm, I'm trying to encourage him to actually start a business, to be the guy around Strongsville, Ohio, where we're from, or just around Cleveland, be that guy, the luthier to go to for all your guitar needs, setups, all that. I wanna make him the go-to guy. So anyways, because I don't like swapping out pickups, I determined in that video, and he wants to do it 24 seven, he said, hey, I'll swap those back for you, no problem, because it's not just, a simple thing, you know, you gotta rewire it. 
these are passive pickups. The 81s are active, so I had to pull the, all that out. You gotta pull all that back in. It's just something I'm not interested in doing. I probably would have never done. But since he offered to do it, he's gonna put the 81s back in for me. And it's, so to take advantage of that, what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna play some tracks or just riff around a little bit. Well, we've got the um, DeMarzio deactivator in here. And then George will come over tomorrow, get this guitar, take it home, put the 81, we'll come back, and then I'll play it with the 81 again, try to play like the same riffs. It'll be through the exact same setup in my DAW here. Um, like I said, with the amp knob, Rev C, and we'll get to compare them back to back. So that'll be a cool experiment. And then on top of that, I'm gonna surprise George and tell him I got another one I want him to do. So this is a beautiful Jackson Virtuoso and it came with the Seymour Duncan JBTB4s. And nothing wrong with them, but it's just not the sound that I'm used to and not the sound that I like. So I'm gonna surprise George, he doesn't know that I'm gonna hand him this one too and be like, pop an 81 in this for me too. So I'm really excited to hear what this guy's gonna sound like because I do truly love this guitar, but I haven't like used it like I've been using all my other ones because it just doesn't have that sound that, that I want. And I think it's because of the 81. So we're going to find that out. So after I play the M1000 with the uh, DiMarzio in there, I'll play this one. Then I'll give them both to George. He'll come back with 81s in each of them. I'll play him again and we'll do eight back to back comparisons. All this is going to probably take a week or more or whatever, but because of movie magic here in the video, you're all going you're gonna to see it all happen in one video and that's going to be great. So let's get started. I'll start with the, the M1000. These are DiMarzio deactivators. Now, let's hear the Jackson Virtuoso with the Seymour Duncan JB TB4s. I realize that everybody likes a different sound, everybody's got different guitar, different amp, different genres of bands they listen to, just guitar sounds that they like and everything like that. So this is just specifically for me and what I like. And unfortunately, I know a lot of people like the guitar sound that I like as well. So if you're after it, you probably are interested in these type of tests. <laughs> me this is a lot closer to what I'm used to. So there we have it. We've heard them both. They've both been recorded. And um, George will be here to pick them up in the morning. And we'll see you back for uh, the test to hear them both again in that same order with 81s. Should be pretty cool. I'm excited. Stay tuned. All right. So here we are. It's the next day. And look who's here. Good buddy George. Done a couple pickup swaps on camera, maybe a couple little uh, videos, you know. I don't know, but anyways. We went to the uh, guitar show together. Guitar, that's right. Just another guy that likes working on guitars. And here it is, the M1000. So, as I mentioned briefly over the phone, we're just gonna put an 81 in the bridge spot. It'll swap everything out. 
And uh, we're gonna leave the neck pickup there just as a dummy, just deactivated. I actually have some dummy EMGs too, which we can go over. That maybe we could throw that in. Or I thought you about said throwing you that wanted in. To keep the but blue, I, want, I want to keep the blue look because that is super cool. But with the dummy, um, the other surprise I got for you that I haven't told you about is that we're gonna do this guy too. <laughs> <laughs> the Jackson Virtuoso, assuming <laughs> assuming you agree to it. I have another 81, and these are um, Duncan uh, JB, a TB4, which I like the sound of, but not for what for what I'm doing. I have one in like that uh, that like Strat looking GL56. I have that wood one. It's not around right now. But Isn't it like, the George Lynch? It's a George yeah, Lynch. Yeah, uh, yeah yes, th that's the GL56, and. Um, and that had a JB in it. And I love the sound of it for just like E standard stuff and for that guitar. But for metal guitars and playing like Kamira riffs and stuff like that, just the 81's the only one that I've liked so far now that I've tried some different ones. Obviously, I've been playing 81's forever. And um, you know- You still like the, them over the, the Fishman? These, these are cool. Yes, so I do have Fishman's and like that M1000HT, a couple one. And um, you know, it's just, I'd say I, that the Fishman, the fluence is actually the closest thing for me to an 81. But still, I'm just kind of like, if, so if I have a guitar that comes with one, I'm like, that's fine. But um, but in terms of trying anything else, as I explained earlier in the video here, I'm just realized I'm an 81 guy. And, and I think that's what it's all about. Why do people swap pickups in the first place? To try to find what they like. What I've liked has been under my nose for 20 years. I'm just going to stick with it. Trade broke, hey, don't fix That's it. right. So um, as long as you're cool with that, I did the test with this one as well, too. So again, uh, Duncan JB, we heard, I recorded, and um, so when you return with these guys, there'll be an 81 in each one, and we'll rip them again through the amp sim and be able to do that comparison, and I think it'll be a, a, a nice test, a test a lot of people may be wondering about, you know? May not be the pickups you wanted to hear experimented with, but... And uh, it'll be like yeah. the difference between two brands here, too. The yeah, Jackson Jackson versus the, LTD. And, no, the oh, Seymour oh, Duncan the, versus the DiMarzio. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... So you up for the challenge? Yeah, let's do it. All right, you got your workshop going. You're gonna start doing more of these. I'm kind of his guinea pig. He say he said he might go into business here. I want him to be the go-to guy, you know, around Cleveland, and uh, I'm happy to be the guinea pig. So we'll get these cased up, and the next time you guys see George, he'll be delivering the guitars, and we'll perform the tests. Yeah. Sound good? Let's do it. And we're back. George just delivered the guitars. Break them open. How was the process for you on a scale of one to ten? One being, I don't know, uh, super <laughs> super easy, and ten being super hard. Maybe. Uh, um, I would say the Jackson was probably a solid. Wait, we said one would be the hardest. Whatever. Just was it hard or easy? <laughs> um, the Jackson was difficult. Jackson was difficult. You ended up having to route out the pickup cavity. We'll get into that in a sec. Which one should I break open first? Let's let's we'll start with the easier one then. You said right. Yeah, yeah. So the M1000, which is what we started with before, and that had the the blue Demarzios. Ah, looking good. That looks like a brand new eighty-one. How's it sound? Sounds great. <laughs> Why are we on there? Think it's in tune? Should still be in tune. All right. We're pretty close to it. Well, let's find out. We'll get it plugged in. So I have it going through exact same setup as I mentioned. This is the uh, the amp knob Rev C. Tuning sounds perfect right off the bat. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, so after you put it in and you gave it its first strum or whatever, did it work right away? No. No, see, yeah. I, uh, no, I wait, no, wait. It, um, I take that back. It did, um, 
it did strum. I had a wiring issue though. And then I went back, checked all my wires, did some resoldering, and then it was, it, I didn't have to remove the pickup. That's all I have to say with that. So. It's surgical, man. When I, yeah. first, when I first put the DeMarzio's in and I got it going, I followed the instructions. I was even on the phone with um, with a guy, uh, Matt at DeMarzio, who was helping me along with it and stuff, step by step, just over the phone. Just, I was describing everything I had going on to him and stuff. And he helped me along the way. That was perfect. And when I first did the first strum, I was like, all right, everything should be perfect. And it didn't work or it sounded super weird or something like that. So he's like, walking me through, check this out again. And what it ended up being is one tiny strand of the wire. Cause you know how the wire, there's, you know, a wire is a bunch of little strands in there. One tiny one was jetting out and just making contact with something else, which was shorting yeah. out the entire thing. And it was as simple as that. I couldn't even see but I had to really get in there and take a look. Matt's like, man, you know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like there's a co connection issue somewhere. Make sure there's not one little strand somewhere. And sure enough, there was. But when it does work, this is what I was getting at. When it finally does work, I feel like Doc Brown. It works! It works! <laughs> it works! You know? For me, I have just more, way more experience with passive pickups. Most of the soldering work I've done has been with passive pickups. I only have one guitar that has EMGs, and that setup is plug and play. There's like really no soldering that was done on that. And you wanted me to uh, gut the the volume and move the volume to the uh, tone position. Yeah, and you put a little nice. And yeah, little so cover on little there. pro cool. tip for anybody: um, if you're looking to remove a uh, pot in your guitar and you want to plug the hole. You can go on Amazon, 3 8 plug. Three Just look up perfect. a plastic 3 8 plug, black, and they'll fit right into that hole perfectly. So, what happens? Same in every position? Yeah. Same cool. in every position. All right. I would have been okay if it were a kill switch or whatever, but this is probably better because then there's no, even if you hit it, it's gonna be good. So this one's just not on at all, yeah. right? Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's just a dummy. It's, now a dummy. It's dummy, and then I uh, I put heat sink on all the ends just so they're all just tucked in there. Oh, perfect. Sounds great. So how does it compare? So, excellent work, my friend. That's exactly what we needed. And it still looks cool, because that DeMarzio, I think, looks awesome. I'm into the blue, and especially just the way it worked out with the see-through finish. I like it. Yeah, because you have, like, the the pearl. Yeah, there's little bits, yeah, little little bits, bits of, blue of blue in that in there, pearl, depending you know? on the light. Man, I see it. Yeah, I see it all over the place. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. Abalone, or I forget what they call that, but awesome. All right, let's check out the Jackson Virtuoso here. I'm excited to see it as well. And this one presented quite a challenge for you. Yes. So the very first problem, George gets these home and uh, he texts me, he's like, first problem. And he flashes this picture on the screen. The 81 doesn't fit in there. Don't! Oh! But he got it in and we're gonna talk about that. That's an old 81. You, can barely, you can't even see the logo on there. I can see it, but it's like the Black Album, Metallica's Black Album, where it's like, it's on there, but you have to look at, look for it, you know, otherwise it just looks I even scrubbed black. it, try to clean it a little N bit nice. too. Yeah, and it just, that's, <laughs> it's got patina now. <laughs> nice. And this is just a dummy. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, it's a, it's just a, a light cab. No wires come out of it at all. So it's just literally a dummy. I had uh, EMG send some dummies way back in the day, or ESP sent them to me. And, and the uh, blade switch is not wired on this one. It's completely bypassed, so. Uh, okay, so when I go like this, it'll be a kill, or no? No, it's just not wired at all. Oh. It's, just, it's just in there, so you don't have okay, a- Okay, so same, so same thing with yeah. that. That's good. That looks good again there. With the cover, what'd you say, 3 8 3 8 plug, the, yeah. 3 8 plug. Yeah, yeah, just look for- Little, uh, little plastic guy. A dummy plug. <laughs> 
still in tune. Nice. So, yeah, so it didn't fit, but for some reason, the dummy did fit. Like as if either the, the you said the, you, you determined that the cavities were actually different sizes. 100%, yeah. So then, the next picture he sends me is you ordered a, a router guide. Where'd you get that? Amazon actually. They do sell them on Stumac, but I ended up not using it. So I ended up just taping the opening, finding the areas that I needed to open. And I used basically masking tape as a template and just eyeballed it. Yeah. Anyways, got it done. Just eyeballed there. So cool. I painted up the inside of the cavity oh, you too. Painted the inside uh, yeah, of the cavity. to make match nice. it black. Yeah. Found some S satin black paint and uh, Looks good. Let's see, the moment of truth. So this will be my first time hearing the Virtuoso with an 81. I had obviously heard the M1000 hundreds of times before uh, before putting the DiMarzio's in with an 81, but this is, here's how it is. Sounds stage ready to me. Excellent work. And you texted me uh, asking me, because you supplied me with a bunch of pickup rings mm -hmm. and gave me the option um, if it was giving us problems to switch to a pickup ring. And I was telling Rob that the reason I didn't go that route is guitars that tend to have pickup rings, the cavities are a lot deeper and they're just routed out for a very loose opening to fit the, the uh, pickup with the springs for adjustment and everything like that. So um, with this style, like on the Jackson, I know for a fact they're trying to keep the thickness of the guitar down. And that's why, you know, you're routing and you're doing like the uh, body mount style pickup, so. So there's what it would look like with one, but you're saying that if we were to put one on. We would have had a route deeper into the guitar to uh, basically allow for room for, um, the pickup uh, springs and stuff Did for you the try adjustment. It? Did you no, I, I didn't. I, it was just, I just saw how tight the fit was. And um, I had a feeling that that would have given us uh, some issues there. I think the, the pickup would have sat out a lot further. Okay. Well, cool. Well, I'm glad it worked out. And uh, the flat black paint. For those that don't know, I hope you don't mind me saying, but George's profession was a professional painter before, <laughs> go, before going into this guitar game, um, which I hope you pursue. But anyway, so yeah, I can't even tell. It looks uh, looks great. The paint matches, unless there's none on, on the top. You know, it's there's just, just a very little bit over here. The the paint on oh, okay. the body cracked ever so slightly on the edge, but I hit it with... Uh... The only thing that would make it look better, in my opinion, is a brand new 81. Yeah. You know, so maybe we'll have to do that. And that just strictly be for aesthetics. Maybe this look good with a with like a brush nickel one. Something a little bit of shine. Find one of those somewhere. It does have some chrome accents like on the, yeah. on the screws and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. That's that's what I was thinking. Yeah. To match uh, like the brush yeah. nickel here on this Floyd Rose 1500, these grub screws and, and these back here. Yeah. So that could look cool. Maybe I'll maybe I'll think about that. Thank you, good night.
And I mentioned before that because uh, this guitar is a passive pickup guitar, it didn't have a cavity for the battery, but there's plenty of room in here. And I just took some gaff tape, rolled it in itself, and stuck the nine volt to the body of the uh, guitar so it doesn't flop around. Anymore. Yeah, good. You got to do what you got to do. So I, I've heard that question quite a bit. What if you don't have a battery compartment in your passive guitar or that came factory passive, and you want to put an 81 or a, an active pickup in there? Typically, there's plenty of room, and look at the size of this cavity. Yeah, yeah. I imagine there's there's a ton there's of tons there. of room, yeah. especially because I got it the, uh, the the one pot. Yeah, yeah the one pot so. exactly. So yeah, just the volume in the tone position, perfect. Excellent. I appreciate it, sir. Yeah, absolutely. A job well done. Kind of experimenting, and uh, we made it work. Yeah. Doc Brown is happy. Picking up two some very custom uh, guitars now. Yes, indeed. We'll have to keep it going. I got uh, I got to get some more eighty ones, but one more that I'd like to do is the Polar Burst here, oh. and that has a different setup there. Um, but I believe that might be the same JB. I'm not sure in that one. I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, maybe I didn't want to do that, or maybe I should keep one around like this with a different pickup option just in case, you know. I don't know, but yeah. Or you can try just, something completely different. Have you like seen a, this one before? Look at that beauty. Yeah. The finish on the back is killer. You can Good go try. something uh, like completely different um, passive wise, something like you wouldn't normally well, use. Well, if I did, I'd probably just go with like an EMG SRO, which is the, like the, a passive I had tried before, or I think they're. There's an X series, which may be active, or maybe there's also a passive series of that. I can't remember. The thing is, is as I described when you were here the first day, it's like, I'm, I realized now after trying a few different ones, I'm not chasing anything yeah. else. There's the one sound I like, and it's the only sound I want, you know? So the one uh, pickup I would just saw that I was interested in, uh, Seymour Duncan, you know, they make the pearly gates. Yes. Uh, they made one that's called the Hades gates and it's like a hot version of a pearly mm. gates and I was like interested in trying that sometime but I, I wasn't mad at the pearly gates in that GL56 yeah. that I mentioned you know but Hades it's a Billy gates. Gibbons pickup from ZZ Top oh yeah yeah that's what they're modeled after huh cool well great success what do you guys <laughs> think of the uh, the tests of the back to back the DiMarzio and the Duncan versus the 81 of course everyone's got their own preference and uh, that's, that's, that's the beauty of this thing. Like I always say, like cars. There's a car for everybody, a paint job, a model, a uh, body style, speed versus luxury. We're the best of both worlds. And that's what I think of a guitar like this and the M1000. Classy, built for speed. I really like that heaviness. Jackson a lot. It's yeah, nice. This uh, is a great really, guitar, the yeah. Virtuoso. Yeah, I like the finish on it and everything. Neck feels super smooth. Yeah. Yeah, beauty. All right. Well, that's going to do it. Appreciate everybody tuning in. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you are. Do Georgia solid and subscribe to my channel if you're not already, okay? <laughs> Please. We both appreciate it. We both appreciate it. And uh, check out Horace Guitars. Horace is a nickname I gave him back when we were like 16 years old or something. Yeah, in high school. Yep. He's thinking about calling the company Horace Guitars. If, you, if that's a 100% thing, you see the logo on screen here. If not, we'll call it still in development. If you ever want to get in touch with him, if you're in the Cleveland area, you want to get some work done, you can always leave me a comment. We'll get you hooked up. So uh, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. All right. Perfect. mooned out. Let me turn off all these cameras. I'm, you I'm so glad there. that uh, everything worked right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was just like, watch with my luck. You're going to plug it in. It's just going to be dead. You know? yeah. like, oh, that that would have sucked. <laughs> Oops. <laughs>